a ball to the corner pocket. Oh hey, welcome to this episode of Range Woodworking, where today we'll be replacing this tattered old pull cue case with something a bit more contemporary. So my client's husband plays in pool competitions and as you can see his current vinyl case is pretty tired and tattered. It's torn, missing a catch and has a fair bit of surface rust. The first thing I do is try to get my head around the dimensions I need. Instead of my usual SketchUp design process, for this project I'm going analogue. I trace the box and pieces of the queue and then measure them all before writing all the dimensions down. I had been saving these pieces of New Guinea rosewood for a special occasion, and I think this may be that occasion. Fortunately, the bigger of the two is just about long enough. Unfortunately, neither side is straight according to this spirit level. So I'll wheel the old table saw into position and get out my tapering sled. Now there's nothing fancy here, I just hang one edge just over the side of the sled, clamp it down and then run it through the saw using the mitre track. Now that I have a clean edge, I can bump the fence over and run the other edge through the saw. Now my plan is to resaw this board into two pieces and two veneers. One day I'll have a bandsaw suitable and capable of resawing, but alas, today is not that day. To resaw these on the table saw, I just do multiple passes, keeping the same face against the fence, raising the blade each pass. And here, from a variety of weird and wonderful angles, you can see me do just that. When all is said and done, voila, two boards and two veneers. The boards get tidied up in the thicknesser and brought down to half an inch. However, the veneers will be a different story. Because they're so thin, I'll use this old piece of laminate flooring to give it some structure. This first board, I use a hot glue gun to stick the veneer to the floorboard and send it through the thicknesser until tidy. But then I can't get it off. I've decided a better option is to use tape and super glue, like this. Then once through the thickness, uh, I can simply separate the tape. Perfect. I'll stick her and stack these for a while to help keep them all straight and flat moving forwards. Then the table saw is wheeled back into action to cut all the pieces to width and then length. 
The general rule of thumb is not to use the fence with a miter gauge, but what I do is use the fence as a stop and then move it away to cut. Perfectly safe. Clamping the long sides together also helps me keep the boards the same length, as using the fence isn't an option for this. Now I'm using box joints for this case, but it's very easy to confuse yourself or get turned around, so I mark my pieces to keep everything in order. I install my half inch compression bit and put my box joint jig together. Now I talk about this jig in my minimalist side table video, um, so I won't talk about it too much here, but I'll link that video below. After setting the bit height, I strap on my dust collection and let it rip. Now if you've watched that side table video, you'll see that regular PVA glues like Type Bond can make life really hard for the already snug joints. So polyurethane glue will be my hero here. And as you can see, they slip together perfectly and clamp up like a dream. Once clamped, I use my really long ruler to check for square. Whilst the glue cures, I start embarking on a journey, veneering something for the very first time. The veneers will be stuck to this 12 mil plywood that I quickly, roughly cut down on the table saw. They'll be cut more accurately later. Nothing fancy here, Type Bond Original, spread out like butter, and weighed down with this ridiculously heavy set of serving platters I haven't got round to finishing yet. And once that glue dries, I just use a Stanley knife to cut away the excess in multiple slices. And when polyurethane glue cures, it becomes this great crispy foam. I'll flush trim that and the excess protruding from the joints away using my router. Which is still quite a messy exercise apparently. Okay, with my best frowny face, I measure and cut the lid to size. And with a little finesse from the hammer, it slides straight in. First time. It was not first time. Okay, okay. Now for the inlay rabbits, I'll install my sturdy router fence. And I'll set the depth of the rabbit and fully secure the fence in place. Now running the narrow end of these along the fence can be dangerous with a finger waggle to boot. It's much safer with a sacrificial piece clamped to the front and back to run along the fence. And then for the long edge, well, there's really nothing complicated about that. Now I have an inlay channel, I should probably prepare an inlay. I use my picture frame sled for nice tight miters. I'll link the video for that below. And rather than measuring this, I just hold it in place and use a marking knife to mark the inside of the mitres. And once marked, just creep up to the line on the sled and bang, perfect first time. 
it was not the first time. To glue these inlays in, I put just a small amount of super glue on the first corner and go round from there. They'll be fixed with a combination of Type Bond Original and some super glue, and then secured with blue tape. Now I cut the inlays a little oversize, so I trim the majority away at the table saw before using a compression flush trim router bit to very, very, very slowly and carefully remove the rest. Time to get that lid and base installed with a very fine line of glue to minimize squeeze out inside the box. The next morning. So the next morning, I have a quick initial sand to level everything out and see how the inlays went. There are a few gaps, um, but overall I'm pretty happy with it. I'll fill these gaps by mushing in a bit of glue, letting that tack up, and then sanding some sawdust into them. Now, whilst everything lines up and before we cut this box in half, I'm just marking here for the concealed hinges I'm gonna use, cause they need holes drilled and have to line up perfectly and it's a whole thing. You'll see. And now to separate the lid section at the table saw. I hate this bit. Fairly simple, a sharp blade, base section against the fence, and I use a featherboard to keep it pushed firmly against the fence. But what I should have done is the narrow ends first, because as you can see, it's very hard to control the loose side whilst on the skinny edge. And apparently inserting two shims to prevent any pinching doesn't offer any help either. Not really sure what I thought would happen here, but it made me decide to hand saw the last edge. A quick sand on the edges and the inside to tidy everything up, and it's time to mark for those concealed hinges. So they require two perfectly aligned holes that they sit inside of. Unfortunately, my drill press recently passed away, RIP. So I have to hand drill these with a depth stop collar. But as you can see, the finished effect is pretty satisfying. With some scraps from before, I cut down these two pieces to work as internal dividers for the cue and the chalk. Again, I'll use some super glue to position the long piece and then very carefully remove it all as one before drilling and screwing it together. Now I would have loved to join these with a half lap or something, but unfortunately I didn't have any scraps long enough. This project is gonna be finished with tongue oil so I apply my first coat to the divider and the inside of the box before installing the divider.
and with the world's least successful dramatic unfurling ever. This is just closed cell foam with an adhesive backing uh, and by coincidence it came in sizes that fit my dividers perfectly. It just adds a bit of padding for the cue and stops everything rattling around. Once I cut the foam to length, I fix some black faux suede to it using some spray adhesive. And whilst that dries, I'll do some hand sanding up to 400 grit and use the laser engraver to add a bit of personalised filigree to the lid. And whilst the laser goes, I'll just quickly ask if you could like the video or subscribe to the channel. Or if there's something you want to see that you would consider subscribing for, let me know in the comments below. Okay, more sanding removes any scorching from the laser. And then I use my air compressor to blow as much of the fine dust out of the pores and grain as possible. And with that, it's time for some tongue oil on the outside of the case. And I'm really happy with the finished look. After I've applied about four coats of oil, I can install the inserts, doing my best to prevent them from bunching up or anything. A few small brass case clips will keep everything shut until it's showtime. I measure, mark and drill for the bottom catch and then use a ruler to line up the top half properly before doing the same. A bit of scrap on the inside of the case will prevent any blowout whilst I drill holes for the handle. Unfortunately, there's not much room to move inside the case now, so I have to hold a tiny driver bit to screw the handle on. Have a quick carry to test it, all good. Because of that lack of space, I'm also unable to countersink the screw heads, which will damage the cue over time. So I've got some of the leftover foam tape and just clamp it in place whilst the glue dries. And that's it for this one. Time to transfer the tools of the trade over and carry it off into the sunset. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please consider liking and subscribing. Until next time, take it easy.